I'm here to talk about tools that we've developed to enable authors of technical documents to easily create deeply interactive content that effectively communicates hard ideas. Textbooks, scientific publications, engineering documents, things like that need what we call computational interactivity. And by this I mean interactivity where the interesting part, the important part, is the underlying mathematical model or simulation or formula. Creating this kind of deep computational interactivity is hard. It requires the participation of a subject matter expert, somebody who really knows the topic, who understands the math and the model underlying it, and who can implement that in a computational system that they're familiar with. And it then also usually requires a programmer or a team of programmers who can implement the thing in a completely different language, a low-level language like Flash or HTML5 or JavaScript. Bringing these two kinds of people together can be quite difficult and expensive. So I've been involved for many years in developing tools to try to help with this problem. Tools that are used by people who work with computation in their work, as well as on tools for electronic publishing. I started off developing the Mathematica Notebook interface over 20 years ago as a way to create documents that mixed text and graphics and computation and later dynamic interactivity in an integrated way. And I started writing books and other documents that used this format to create interesting interactive electronic documents. Back in the 90s, the world wasn't really ready for this yet, but now it is. So a year ago, we announced the impending release of the Computable Document Format, CDF. And indeed, we released it the following summer, and it's now being used by more and more publishers and available on more and more platforms. But remember, CDF is based on the 24 years of technology that we've been working on. Its specific form is a response to the world finally being ready for what we've been doing all this time. So I'd like to show you an example of that. This is the Briggs-Cochran Calculus Textbook. And if you look through it, you'll find lots and lots and lots of dynamic interactive examples. I could just keep going, opening sections. This chapter happens to be full of primarily two-dimensional line drawings, but there's ones with 3D graphics and all different kinds of interactivity. In fact, over 600 dynamic interactive illustrations, all of which were done by one guy, Eric Schultz, a community college professor in Washington State. When this calculus textbook was being developed, it was not one of the big juggernauts. It was not a multi-million dollar budget. It was a new calculus textbook, unproven. And the budget for creating interactivity for it was a guy, an author-like person to work on producing the interactivity. It since has become one of the, the, the more successful of the new calculus textbooks. It was product of the year at Pearson. It's led to a lot of interesting things. But the point is, it was only possible to even imagine creating that much interactivity for an unproven textbook because it was possible to do it so much more efficiently, radically more efficiently, using CDF technology, not any of the other sort of lower level systems that might have been used. This textbook is an example of something which is distributed through Pearson's My Math Lab online sort of cloud-based textbook distribution system. It could just as well have been distributed as a, a desktop file that was downloaded. And there's many other places and ways in which CDF is now being deployed. Let's look at a few of those. So here, for example, blogs, our uh, embedding technology uh, allows you to very easily create a dynamic interactive example and publish it to a blog. We have a plugin for WordPress that makes it particularly easy. This is a user-generated site that we have, demonstrations website. It has thousands upon thousands of interactive widgets, which are submitted by users, reviewed, published. This is a courseware resource, hundreds of uh, interactives, uh, complete textbooks available in CDF format with lots of interactivity in them. And uh, really the meat of my talk here is how one goes about creating this stuff. What is it that makes it so easy? And one of the things that's really nice about CDFs is that we have a variety of layers of authoring environment in which to do it. And I'm going to start with showing you uh, the most hardcore sort of environment, which is a Mathematica notebook. Let me just type in a simple function, plot sine of x, x from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, so this is meant to represent sort of the subject matter of our demonstration. This is the thing that your subject matter expert would create using, uh, in this case, the Mathematica language system. This is a very widely used computational system. People like it. People who use math in their work find it very comfortable. It's very widely used for that purpose. So you have to imagine that instead of just a simple plot, this is actually something involving, you know, interest rate on Greek debt or a physics problem or something like that. So let's, let's take this example, this piece of computation, and let's add a parameter. So we'll say we want not, not just a plot, we want to have 
a bunch of plots, a table of plots, and let n go from 1 to 10. So now we've sort of explored a little bit of a computational space. We put in a parameter and we saw how the problem varies if we move the parameter around. And now supposing we wanted to take the next big step, which is create an interactive version of this, where n is controlled by a slider. This is the point at which you typically would end up having to go find the programmer, find the, the Flash or the HTML5 programmers to re-implement this mathematical model that we're imagining here in some completely different language uh, at great expense and, and trouble. Uh, if you're doing it with CDF, all you have to do is replace the word table with the word manipulate, and you have now created an interactive version of this example. This is equivalent in all ways to uh, something created with one of the lower level systems. The difference is that instead of having uh, a couple of days of pain, you have replacing one word. That's all it takes to add the interactivity to it. So this is now something which you can deploy uh, easily to a standalone CDF file or embed in an HTML page. You know, it's, you're done, essentially. You now just kind of push it out into the world and you have a thing that uh, people can play with. And you can actually get even easier than that. Uh, if you go to the uh, Wolfram Alpha website, so I'm logged in here as uh, a Wolfram Alpha Pro subscription, and uh, let me show you how I can create a similar, but actually even more interesting interactive that way. So I'm gonna say very n in the plot of uh, sine of x, y to the n power. And you notice I have not used anything like the Mathematica syntax. So we have no space between the x and the y. This is using the Wolfram Alpha natural language processing system to figure out what it was that I actually meant. And let me turn on interactivity here. And what it did was, it, as a result, as the output of the query, it gave me a custom-built dynamic interactive thing, which I can move around and see this plot. And that's, you know, pretty remarkable. We've gone from having, um, gone from a, a natural English language input with a vague sort of sloppy expression of what we might want to do, and have produced executable widget code, which can then be exported or downloaded as a CDF and then published in your blog or, or whatever. Um, essentially no programming involved. Now, one of the things that those of you who have been around for a while may be wondering is like, what, how, how exactly how powerful is this? How flexible is it what you can do? And is this really a realistic way of creating a wide range of dynamic interactivity? And there's two answers to this question. One is that Wolfram Alpha is an extremely broad and powerful system, and it's able to produce a very wide range of interactive output, and we're expanding every day uh, the range of things that it can do. But even more powerfully, and even more importantly, you always have the option of taking the result that Wolfram Alpha gives you uh, and copying, pasting it into Mathematica and working with it in the Mathematica environment. And this is important because you now have a thing which you can interact with, which you didn't have to know how to come up with on your own, but you can modify it in a sort of programming language environment. And that sort of power-assisted programming is a really powerful concept that we expect people to be uh, using more and more. And I want to just make one other modification to this, because this, you know, you might say, well, I've seen that before, done as, as JavaScript or whatever. Uh, let me just show you what I mean by the importance of a mathematical system underlying. So let's replace the plot with uh, something a little more complicated, a, a, an integral. We need to make n have a step size of 1 with respect to x. Evaluate that. So now we have something which uh, you just really can't do uh, unless you want to spend 100 man years or so implementing symbolic integration in Flash. Um, this is not something that it's realistic to do. People don't do this using those systems because you just can't. But uh, using CDF technology is absolutely trivial. This just works. This is it. This is the input. This is the output that you can paste into your blog and uh, let people play with this particular little bit of math. So I hope I've shown you that uh, the CDF environment is uh, a fairly complete ecosystem. It includes a range of authoring environments, raw Mathematica code, natural language input, 
and an ability to work between those to fine-tune output of natural language systems within a programming environment. And it includes a range of deployment environments, cloud, desktop, embedded in a web browser. But there is one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, which is actually in the title of my talk, which is, of course, mobile platforms. What I can announce today, although we are not shipping it yet, is that we now have a fully operational native implementation of the CDF player on the iPad, which I'll now show you. So this is an example that's taken from the Briggs Cochran Calculus textbook. Uh, the presentation is somewhat different because of the touch interface, but it works. And what you're seeing is native Mathematica computational kernel fully implemented running on an iPad, enabling the complete range of CDF dynamic interactivity running on an iPad. This is not shipping yet, but we're working hard on it. Um, solutions for iBooks 2 are on the way, and in fact, uh, we've been showing in our booth Wolfram Alpha widget integration with iBooks 2 that's already working now, and we have high hopes for deeper integration between CDF technology and iBooks. So if you like what you see, here are uh, people and places you can learn more, people to talk to. Thank you very much.